Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pellet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I really do mean your favorite fighting games, because I'm not a Mortal Kombat fan. Today, we're looking at a character who gives me an excuse to make some terrible ice puns, Sub-Zero. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Sub-Zero is and what we should be looking for in his character designs. Sub-Zero is a codename used by several members of the Lin Kuei, an ancient Chinese clan of ninjas. Lin Kuei are not ninjas. I mean assassins. First was Bi Han, a cold-blooded cryomancer who entered the Mortal Kombat tournament to eliminate an evil sorcerer. Before he could complete his mission, he was slain by Scorpion, the vengeful specter of a ninja from a rival clan he had killed long ago. Thus, Bi Han's younger brother Kwai Lang took up the mantle of Sub-Zero. He too is a formidable warrior and cryomancer, but he's more chill than his icy-hearted brother, though he initially sought vengeance against Scorpion, cooler heads prevailed in the end. When the rest of the Lin Kuei turned into evil cyborgs, long story there, Sub-Zero left the clan and eventually formed a new Lin Kuei. They are no longer assassins for hire, but defenders of Earthrealm. In the original Mortal Kombat, which I can no longer call Mortal Kombat 1 because Netherrealm likes to make things confusing, Sub-Zero looks like a pretty standard ninja, or at least a pretty standard 90s pop culture ninja. His wide, triangular robe causes his shoulders to appear broader, giving him an imposing silhouette. But other than that, there's not a whole lot to comment on. His color palette is super simple, but it works well. The icy blue pops out against black and contrasts Scorpion's yellow. This costume is absolutely iconic, and it established the foundation that all future versions of Sub-Zero and his many palette swaps will build upon. But from a modern perspective, it's so basic that I can't go above a 5 out of 10. Mortal Kombat 2 uses a slightly more detailed version of the same design. There's a quilted pattern on his robe, which makes it feel more like actual clothing as opposed to a Halloween costume. However, his mask is plastic instead of cloth, which has the exact opposite effect. Overall, I think this is a little bit better than the previous game, but not enough to warrant another point. 5 out of 10. Mortal Kombat 3 gives him a much more substantial overhaul, and not for the better. At this point in the story, the Lin Kuei is turned on him, so he stitched their uniform in favor of a sort of military-looking outfit, though he apparently couldn't find a new shirt to replace his robe. Let's start with the positives. His, uh... His eye scar is unique. Yeah, that's all I got. He looks like a bargain bin action figure. Not sure what he's even supposed to be wearing. Those oversized utility belts are a really skinny padded vest. Even his colors have been downgraded. I like the addition of silver to his palette, but the steep blue doesn't seem as icy as the lighter, almost turquoise hue from earlier games. It's also less distinct from Katana's usual color. 3 out of 10. Perhaps as a response to that costume's frosty reception, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 added classic Sub-Zero. Despite the name, it's actually a new costume, although new is a bit of a stretch, because it's just a pellet swap of scorpions. I think this is his best mask so far. It's more detailed and structured than MK1, but it doesn't have a plasticky texture like MK2. However, I've never been a fan of this square padding on his robe. It reminds me of a gym mat. Also, the sides of his robe are more vertical than in previous games, so they don't meet in the middle or flow into his loincloth. 4 out of 10. His Mortal Kombat 4 design is close to his UMK3 look, but it removes the square pattern on his robe and makes his loincloth a more angular shape. For the first time, Sub-Zero and Scorpion's ninja outfits aren't just palette swaps, which is nice, though Sub-Zero's is definitely the plainer of the two. I know a lot of people dislike the little Batman ears on his hood, but I don't mind. They make it seem more like a wrapped up piece of fabric instead of a head sock. The shade of blue is a happy medium between MK1 and MK3, and it's a shame it doesn't show up more often. 5 out of 10. His alternate costumes in MK4 are strange. While most other characters get one alternate color and one classic costume, Sub-Zero gets two variations of his default. The first simply turns his limbs to ice, while the second removes his mask and adds blue stripes to his legs, partially mimicking his MK3 design. Neither of these are bad, but they're pretty underwhelming. I would have liked to see them change up the colors or patterns, too. 5 out of 10 for each. His Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance design is unfortunately based on his MK3 design, but it's more in line with the old-school mystical ninja aesthetic. If Reddit can be believed, the Chinese characters on his utility belt thingies mean of the Ice Dragon, which ties into the dragon emblems on his belt buckle and loincloth. Fans are split on the ice arms, but I think they're cool. Cryomancers are meant to be a distinct race that originated in Adenia before being exiled to other realms, so I like when they don't look entirely human. The same goes for his blue scar and white eyes, although the latter was a missed opportunity to further differentiate him from Scorpion. This is a definite improvement, but still only a 4 out of 10. His alternate costume is an updated version of his classic look. It works in a few elements of his default design, such as the ice arms and the Chinese characters. 
It also adds a Silver Dragon medallion to his chest, which is more than decorative, since it's actually a magic artifact that plays an important role in his story. His mask is more mechanical this time around, resembling some sort of breathing apparatus. My only issue with this outfit is that his arms are so naked. I get wanting them to be mostly bare so that you can see the ice on them, but he could still have bracers or something. 7 out of 10. In Mortal Kombat Deception, Sub-Zero looks like he wants to dine on turtle soup. According to the lore, he found this armor in an abandoned temple that once belonged to his ancestors, the ancient cryomancers. It's much more heavily armored than his usual garb, featuring a helmet, metal mask, chainmail shirt, pauldrons, bracers, tacit, and greaves. He also has a fur collar, which I'm assuming is just for fashion since he has control over ice. Speaking of which, his ice arms are sadly absent, but his skin is pale and slightly bluish, which achieves a similar effect. His costume ranks super highly among Mortal Kombat fans, but in my opinion, it's too bulky for him. He doesn't look like an agile assassin. I like all the silver, though. 7 out of 10. His alternate costume is surprisingly grounded. He's wearing a Bumanja, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which is an armored coat popular in medieval China and the Mongolian Empire. The dragon medallion is back, and it's complemented by matching circular crests on his shoulders and hips. But I've skated around the subject for long enough. This hair is atrocious. It reminds me of Zuko's style from Season 1 of Avatar, except it's even worse because there's nothing around the base of his ponytail. The combination of grey hair and being mostly bald makes him look way older than he actually is. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. 4 out of 10. Mortal Kombat Armageddon reuses his costumes from Deadly Alliance and Deception. Since I don't take graphics into account, the same scores apply. His Shaolin Monk's design is another take on his classic look. He's wearing a lot of metal armor, but unlike in Deception, he still has a slim, ninja-like silhouette. Instead of a quilted or square pattern, his robe is broken up by thick black stripes, leaving blue only along the edges. This contrasts Scorpion, who has stripes running perpendicular to the edges of his robe. This is one of his simpler redesigns, but works well. 7 out of 10. His Mortal Kombat vs. DC costume is somewhat similar to Shaolin Monk's, but he has scale armor instead of chainmail, patterned grey stripes on his robe instead of plain black ones, a dragon motif on his shoulders and loincloth, and a mask closer to that from Deception. Dragons are awesome, so I like seeing them at the forefront, but other than that, this outfit doesn't do much to stand out. That's not to say it's bad, though. 7 out of 10. Mortal Kombat 9 gives us yet another take on his classic look. Like Shaolin Monk's, he's wearing a lot of armor but still has a slim silhouette. While his previous few designs used a dragon motif, this one instead opts for Chinese Guardian Lions, which is a little more unique as there are several other Mortal Kombat characters associated with dragons. His robe has a more traditional shape, with one side folding over the other instead of being totally symmetrical. It's covered in metal decorations, including a couple Lin Kuei symbols, and his shoulders are a slightly different shade of blue. He also has blue ribbons wrapped around his arms and legs, thus spreading color out across more of his body. I think this is a perfect update. It brings him into the modern era without overcomplicating his design or losing what made it so iconic to begin with. 10 out of 10. His alternate costume is Bi Han rather than Kwai Lang. It's a palette swap of Noob Saibot, which makes sense because Noob is the evil undead shadow version of Bi Han. It also replaces his voice with Noob's, which is a neat detail. However, this outfit is really plain, especially compared to his default. 6 out of 10. His classic with a K costume is mostly based on MK2, but it has a cloth mask like MK1, which I think is an improvement. When I picture a Mortal Kombat ninja, this is the outfit that immediately jumps to mind. 6 out of 10. Mortal Kombat 9 also introduced a cyborg version of Sub-Zero, fittingly named Cyber Sub-Zero. This video is long enough as is, so I'm gonna save him for a future episode about the Cyber Lin Kuei. Mortal Kombat X adds more complexity and texture. His robe is puffy like a winter coat, he's covered in belts and straps, and he has knives attached to his arms. For some reason, his loincloth is really short and skinny compared to the top of his robe. As well as messing up his silhouette, this throws off his color palette, because there's very little blue on the bottom to balance out the top. While we're on the topic of color, Sub-Zero really suffers from MKX's gritty aesthetic. This dark, desaturated teal just isn't icy enough. 7 out of 10. His Kwai Lang costume is an updated version of his Deadly Alliance design. It's neat to see young Sub-Zero wearing one of his older self's outfits, but I'm still not a fan of this general look. 4 out of 10. His Revenant costume is essentially an edgier version of his default, and funny enough, it fixes the main issues I had with it. His loincloth is more proportional to the top of his robe, and his color palette, while still dull, suits this evil, undead version of him. It's also interesting to see him with the Revenant's signature red and yellow accents, because prior to this, he's exclusively worn cool colors. I think a hood would really tie this whole thing together. It would further obscure his human features and make him look even more spine-chilling. But even without it, it's an 8 out of 10. His Tundra costume, which the mobile version instead calls his Cold War costume, is based on Soviet military gear. Apparently Netherrealm just really loves that aesthetic, because they did a whole line of Soviet costumes in both this game and Injustice. The aviator hat and mask are an interesting alternative to his usual look, but the rest of it is so plain. He's just wearing a sleeveless vest and some pants. The bare arms look even more out of place here than in his Deadly Alliance ult, because he's otherwise bundled up for an Arctic environment. Even if you use the variation that gives him ice arms, it's just kinda boring. 
4 out of 10. Lastly for this game is his Blue Steel costume. I criticized his MK3 design for looking like an action figure, but this one is actually supposed to. It's modeled after a figurine that came with the Collector's Edition. It's a perfect recreation, right down to the hinges on his joints. It's simple but striking, due in part to being one of few MKX costumes with some actual color. That said, the black-on-black -black details such as his boots are hard to notice. It has a very top-heavy silhouette, which is accurate to the figurine, but I don't think it looks great in-game. 7 out of 10. His Injustice 2 design was created by legendary comic book artist Jim Lee. It totally reimagines him for a superhero universe, removing most of the historical ninja influence while maintaining the essence of Sub-Zero. His robe appears to be a rubbery material, and underneath that is a black bodysuit with shards of ice jutting out. His mask is even more explicitly mechanical, with metal pipes on the sides and a vent in front. The skulls on his knees are an odd choice, both because skeletal imagery is usually Scorpion's thing and because it doesn't tie into the rest of his design, aside from his torso maybe looking slightly ribcagey. But that's a minor complaint. This costume would be a poor fit for a mainline Mortal Kombat game, but it's perfect for Injustice. 9 out of 10. In stark contrast to MKX, his Mortal Kombat 11 design is sleek, modern, and heroic looking, with saturated colors and sharp, clean lines. His palette even includes some bright white in addition to the usual blue, black, and silver, which calls to mind snow. His ninja hood is more of a hat this time around, which is an interesting idea, but I think it looks kinda goofy. 7 out of 10. MK11 has a lot of alternate costumes, and if I tried to cover them all, it would slow things down to a glacial pace, so I'm going to stick to the two that shake things up most significantly. First up is his Dimitri Vegas costume, which replaces his face and voice with that of a Belgian DJ who created music for the game. The problem with this, aside from just how weird it is, is that Vegas isn't a voice actor. I'm not so cold as to mock your pain. And no offense to the guy, but he has a very normal face. He lacks the unique features that make Sub-Zero interesting, such as his scar. And the worst part is, I like the outfit. Sure, it's just a recolor of his story mode costume, but it looks great and stands out from everything else in the game. Just too bad that regular Sub-Zero can't wear it. Went back and forth on whether I should factor his voice acting into the score, because it's not really a part of his character design, but it is inextricably linked to this specific costume. So, I'm just gonna give it two scores. Based solely on visuals, it's a 7 out of 10, but as a total package, it's a 3. Let's just hope MK1 leaves the voice acting to actual voice actors. Oh no. His Blizzard King costume, released as part of a Halloween-themed skin pack, mixes the aesthetic of fantasy dark lords like the Night King or the Lich King with that of Samurai. The spikes of ice forming a crown on his head look awesome. Part of me wishes there was ice elsewhere on his armor, but I also like that the crown is a unique focal point. He has a very dark color palette, but the combination of blue and pure black keeps it interesting. 9 out of 10. I usually don't discuss customization options, but I'm gonna make an exception, because the Grandmaster's icy mask in combination with the Blizzard King armor is a 10 out of 10. These fangs complement the crown super well and amp up his spooky nature without drawing attention away from his head. His Mortal Kombat 1 design goes back to basics. This game is a reboot of the series, so he's Bi Han once again. It obviously takes some inspiration from his classic look, but it leans away from the ninja aesthetic and more towards a general martial artist. There are subtle stripes on his robe that remind me of the quilted pattern from MK2. Sub-Zero and Scorpion look more alike than they have in a long time, which is fitting, because in the new timeline, Scorpion is his brother Kwai Lang. That said, they're more than palette swaps. If you compare Sub-Zero's mask and pauldrons to those of his fellow Lin Kuei members, you'll see that they're much more angular, which makes him seem dangerous and intimidating. At the time of writing, I don't know MK1's story, but the trailers make it seem like Sub-Zero is going to play an anti-heroic or even villainous role, so this difference in shape language could be a hint towards that. This costume is probably too simple for some, but I think it's as complex as it needs to be. 10 out of 10. And with that, we have ranked every single Sub-Zero costume. I have to say, he didn't score as highly as I expected. Especially in early games, the designers felt a need to constantly reinvent him. There's nothing wrong with that, except the reinventions were rarely as good as the more traditional looks. But that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. For episode 30, we'll be discussing Amy slash Viola from Soul Calibur, as requested by Sean Sherrod. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.